So this video is an introduction to solving equations in specific around how do you record your work. So we're going to start with kind of a, a simpler problem, and then we're going to move to more complex problems. So we really want to kind of build muscles around showing work. So as you get to more complicated problems, you've got the skills in which to do it. And guessing and checking doesn't always work because your number is not always going to be a whole number or an integer. So first off, what I like to do is I look and I kind of almost visually look at each side. And so I look at the left-hand side of the equation and go, are there any things that I can do to combine like terms or is there a distributive property? And I can see I can't add a 6x and a 3, so there's nothing I can do on the left-hand side to simplify that. I'll do the same thing. I'll look at the right-hand side. It's just one number, so there's no simplifying there. Then the next step I'm going to look at and go, okay, my, my end goal is I want all of the variables, like the x on one side, and all of the constants or the things that don't have x's on the other side. So I can see right now I have a combination of a variable and a constant. So I'm going to want to get rid of the constant so that I just have the x. And then I can deal with that coefficient or the number in front of the x later. So you're going to be wanting to work with the idea of opposites. And kind of a fancier math term is inverse. Okay, So I'm going to say, OK, plus 3. I want to get rid of plus 3. So what's the opposite or the inverse of adding 3? And the inverse is minus 3. Now, when I set my problem up, I like to, add, I like to set it up so that the constant is they're right above each other. Okay, So the plus 3 and minus 3 are above each other. And same thing, I'm going to be putting it under here. I don't want to put like a minus 3 under here instead. So I'm lining things up. So I'm keeping things balanced because I'm doing the same thing to both sides. So it's still equal because I subtracted 3 from both sides. And then I can see, well, what do I have next? Well, I'm trying to simplify things. And this way, I can simplify it here because I have a plus 3 and a minus 3. And a plus 3 and a minus 3, that is a zero pair. So that's going to cancel out. So I have 6x is equal to, and I'm bringing everything kind of straight down, negative 27 minus 3 is negative 30. Once again, I'm trying, and my end goal is to get x equal to something. So right now I've got this 6 in front of it. That's a problem. So I want to ask myself, what operation is happening there? So this is 6. And you don't see it, but there's an invisible like multiplication sign. <laughs> it's still kind of invisible. So I'm going to say, OK, what's the opposite of 6 times? So the inverse of 6 times is divide by 6. And we can show it using the fraction bar. So I'm going to do divide by 6 to both sides. Once again, I'm maintaining that, that they're both equal. And then how that's simplifying is that right here, 6 over 6. 6 divided by 6 is a giant 1. So now I have basically 1x, or just x, is equal to negative divided by positive, negative 30 divided by 6 is 5. Now, when you get your final answer, the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to check your answer. So I have kind of little instructions here. So you can kind of um, hit the pause button and kind of record pour this down so you have it. But basically, you're going to write the original problem. You're going to substitute in the answer. And then you're going to check, does the left-hand side of the equation equal the right-hand side of the equation? So let's look at that. So here's so the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to write my original equation. So write the original problem. Now, the way that I like to do it is I'm going to write it but wherever I see the variable, I'm just going to put parentheses. So I'm writing my original problem. But instead of the x, I'm going to put parentheses. And this is going to become an increasingly more important strategy as the problems become more complex. So it might seem kind of basic now, but it will really help you when it, you get into more sophisticated problems. The second step is I'm going to substitute in the answer. So I think that the answer is negative 5. So in here, where it was x, I'm going to put in my answer of negative 5. I like to just kind of underline that so that I can see that I have a multiplication here first. So 6 times negative 5 is negative 30 plus 3 equals negative 27. 
negative 27 equals negative 27. And so I'm looking to see, does my left-hand side, does it equal to the right-hand side? Yes, it does. And so what that indicates is that this is indeed the correct answer. Now, if these two sides do not equal each other, there's one of two issues. Either one, this is not the correct answer, or you made a mistake there. So double check this, and then if you're still getting things that are not equal, then you come back and you redo this work and uh, find your answer and then go through the checking process again. So let's look at another problem here. So here we have 2, pl two times the quantity 3, x, 3 plus x equals x plus 1. So once again, you can hit the pause button and kind of go through the steps and then kind of check and see how I'm doing it. Okay. So once again, I like to see, are there things on the left-hand side that I can simplify? Yes, I can see that I have the distributive property. So I'm going to use just little arrows to show me what I need to do. So 2 times 3 is 6. And then I have plus 2x and that's equal to x plus 1. Then I'm going to kind of continue. Is there anything on the left-hand side that I can simplify? No, I can't add x's and constants together. And once again, we've already checked that there's nothing that can be simplified on the right side. So now we're going to say, okay, how do I get all the x's to one side and all of the non-x's or the constants to the other side? So I'm going to say, hmm, this is a bigger number, positive 2x, or I shouldn't know if it's bigger number, but it's a, a the, the coefficient is larger. And I'm going to keep this on this side, and you'll kind of see why later, because if I subtract the 2x to both sides, I ended up with a negative x, and that's just, I mean, it's doable. It's just an extra step in there. So I'm going to keep, I'm going to get rid of this 6. There's lots of, there's more than one right way to do this, so I'm just kind of talking my way through it so you can kind of see just the way that I'm approaching it, but there's more than one right way to do it. So I'm going to get rid of the 6. And the way to get rid of the 6 is I'm going to do the opposite. And so right now it's like a plus 6 there. So I'm going to do the opposite, which is subtract 6 from both sides. And once again, I'm lining up these numbers. And so I'm not going to put the minus 6 under the x. I'm going to put the minus 6 under the 1 because they're, they're both constants. And then how is that helping me? Well, this here, plus 6 and minus 6, this is one of our zero pairs. So that's kind of now gone. So now we have 2x equals, and you see how I'm bringing everything kind of straight down, equals 1 plus negative 6 is negative 5. And you can see that I have x's on both sides, and my ultimate goal is to get all the x's on one side. So I'm going to get rid of this x here. And once again, it's basically like a plus x. So I'm going to do the opposite, minus x, minus x. And then once again, I'm still keeping things balanced because I'm doing the same thing to both sides plus x and minus x, that's another zero pair. So I get x, 2x minus x is x equals negative 5. <laughs> Interesting, I got the same answer for, for both. They don't always give you the same answer, but that just happened to. Once again, the way to check, you write the problem again. So here's my original problem, 2 times 3 plus, and wherever there's an x, I'm going to put parentheses, and I've got this little double parentheses there, equals x plus 1. So same as above. And now I'm just going to stick in my answer, minus 5, minus 5, to all the places where I have x, and then I'm going to solve it to check. So 2, and I can do what's inside the parentheses, 2 plus negative 5 is negative 2, equals negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4, negative 4, equals negative 4. So the left-hand side equals the right-hand side, so yes, that is correct, which tells me that is indeed the correct answer. Okay, so good luck with that. This is just, once again,